Hello, I'm Pat Salvas. Thanks for joining us on this DartmouthSports.com and USTF CCCA Student Athlete Spotlight with Abby D'Agostino, seven-time national champion in track and field and cross country. Abby, thanks for uh, taking the time to sit down with us. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Pat. Thanks for having me. Uh, Abby, you're attempting to become just the third woman to win three straight 5,000 meters in the outdoor. How does preparing for this championship differ than 2013 for your back-to-back -back title or even the first one in 2012 for your first, I guess, national championship overall? Yeah. Um, I guess, you know, the biggest difference is just the sense that this is my last race in a Dartmouth uniform. Um, you know, uh, nothing about sort of the race strategy or um, the way I'm going to attempt, um, you know, I think that, that all stays the same. But, yeah, this I'm really just going to try to seize the moment um, because... I think running for with that Dartmouth uniform has been in, an incredible motivating force for me. And, um, yeah, I, I think it's going to be different for me to put on a new uniform now and, um, you know, have that team still, I, I guess, that team feeling behind me, but it'll be different. So, um, but having teammates there to accompany me through this experience and to have their own experience at Eugene is going to be really special. And um, so... Yeah, that immediate presence, I think, is, is what's going to make this different for me. Now, you talked about, you know, being the last race in a Dartmouth uniform. You've accomplished so much in your time here in Hanover. Um, what are you going to look back most fondly on between national championships, you know, the cross-country championship um, for the Ivy League HEPs this year? What are you going to look back on in your college career, and, and that's going to be the most fond memory for you? Yeah. Um, yeah, HEPS is definitely a huge one, um, especially uh, because, you know, the entire team even, like, drove down to watch us. So I would say, yeah, it's between HEPS and um, uh, Cross Nationals. Um, but I don't know. I think I'm even going to go for HEPS because it was just the first, I think, real moment. I mean, I think we had, we knew we had the potential to win um, that day, but... Uh, to really kind of realize that um, all in one moment, you know, it happened so fast. Whereas it, in cross, we didn't know for a little bit. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I, I just think like the emotion there was um, unparalleled and um, just the sense that we could all trust one another. And we knew that even leading into the race. And so um, I think that means a lot for the team now and then moving forward. Competing at a high level is always difficult. You are not only competing at a high level on track, but at Dartmouth here, uh, academically, it's a high level of, of, of work put forth in that. Um, in terms of academics, athletics, uh, personal life, just when things tend to get difficult, is there anything you, you look to? I know you're a psychology major. Is there anything kind of mental aspect that you know that you can kind of fall back on that helps get you through some of the tougher times? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, the psychology major has been helpful for me in like a racing context, definitely just um, staying positive and that sort of thing. But I think what really makes a difference for me is my faith. Um, that's like, you know, I think it's become so much stronger just through um, you know, the level of pressure I've experienced at some of these meets and um, even even like some academic challenges that I faced here. Um, it just gives me a sense that I'm doing something not for myself, but for a higher purpose and um, that, you know, this is a platform for me. So that's what gives me the joy to really do it for a particular reason, you know, not just because I feel these expectations. Right. right. Now, on the eve of graduation, on the eve of the 2014 Outdoor NCAA Championships, everyone knows Abby D'Agostino, national champion. But let's rewind back a little bit to high school. You were injured a bit. You weren't necessarily the most highly recruited individual in the area. What did you do? It, what was the mindset then that's different than now? What, what helped you get through that and, and say to yourself, like, I can get to this level that you're currently at now? Um, you know, it, it's funny because in high school it was just like a totally different priority for me. And so now, like, I, I don't know, I think I've just made that decision that I'm 
putting my heart into this and um, to me, you know, it's worth it to um, to do that and to do my very best and that means like, you know, the mental preparation as well and that's something that I've really developed in my time here, um, you know, in part through Mark and his experience with sports psych and his knowledge of, you know, the type of competition um, I've experienced now versus in high school. Is there a moment you can actually pinpoint when you were younger that you said, you know, this is what I love to do, this is what I want to pursue, and I have the ability to. I know, um, you know, kids play other sports, but when was there a moment where you were like, you know what, I'm a runner, and this is what I want to continue to do moving forward? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that was definitely my freshman year in um, high school. Uh, I hadn't run competitively before that, and um, I actually was planning, I was a swimmer through eighth grade, and I was planning on swimming for my high school that winter and then just fell in love with the cross country team and the sport and you know figured out I was good at it and so um, yeah I just think I felt a sense of family in um, the sport and that really made me want to pursue it to the next level. When you got here obviously we talk about previously the expectations not necessarily being to the extent where we see them today but you've had people who have believed in you since the beginning and offered you support and guidance, whether that be Coach Coogan or um, Sandy or anyone else. I mean, I know you were recruited by another coach outside of Mark. So tell us what it's been like to come here. And though the expectations weren't necessarily high for you on a national level when you got here, to have the people who have pushed you and gotten you to the point where you are now. Yeah. I, you know, I owe so much credit to those people. Um, because I think just just that belief in mm -hmm. and of itself is like what like really made me buy in, you know? And I'm so fortunate to not have had that pressure coming in because I think it, you know, would have been very hard to maintain um, and you know, rise to the, those expectations. So yeah, I'm just grateful for those who really valued me as a person and a runner. And um, you know, that's, really I think those two came together that belief and my willingness to, to pursue it um, so yeah here's to those <laughs> well take us through the recruiting process just a little bit in terms of you know who uh, you know where you were looking in terms of other places not necessarily by name but also but then what kind of solidified it that that Dartmouth was the right fit for you that this was the place you wanted to pursue all of your dreams yeah surely so I definitely knew I wanted to go to an Ivy. My mm -hmm. other top schools were Ivies. Um, but I, you know, something that really resonated with me was just the coach saying, you know, you're going to contribute here. And mm -hmm. that's really what I wanted in college. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's what um, piqued my interest in a, um, a recruiting visit. Mm -hmm. And then um, just fell so in love with, like, the genuine welcoming um, nature of the girls. And, yeah, I just... I had this sense that like people were really happy here and that um, if I worked hard the summer, you know, I experienced mm -hmm. high, uh, health stuff in high school and so I knew that if I worked hard, I could, you know, score points for the team and that's what I wanted. Your contributions obviously um, are pretty well known, but take me through the, the process um, or at least the mental aspect of how excited you are to be part of helping the program rebuild after a few down years to get them back. Obviously, um, you know, you're a big part of it, but, you know, Alexi Pappas has been a part of it. Dana Giordano may be the one taking the next step. But to get from where you were when you first got here to a championship as a senior year and really setting the stage for success in the future to come. Yeah, it's really incredible to have witnessed such a shift from our freshman mm -hmm. year. Um, like, you know, example A, the amount of points that we scored mm -hmm. at HEPS. Um, I just think that we really owe it to individuals mm -hmm. making that choice, you know, making those sacrifices to put 100% of their energy into this sport, mm -hmm. given the other things that we're required to do here. And I really think it happens on an individual basis. It's like in each event group, if that happens, you know, all right, like it's that person's a leader. Mm -hmm. And so I think people have really started to embody that and um, it's special to see it and to know you know that we that there's more to come from it right now the tough question here 
obviously you've had success in Eugene before, but maybe your biggest disappointment, which people tend to overlook because of all the positives, was coming up just short at the Olympic trials two summers ago. Going back to Eugene for championship events like this, is there a motivating factor behind that miscue? Um, and obviously missing by just as close as it was has to be a huge motivating factor, but also something that you can't be massively disappointed in. I mean, you were very close to going to the Olympics. Now, is it hurt more for just missing out or for having been that close? You're, you're proud, but what is it like going back to Eugene in the, sa- you know, the, the same setting as that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Eugene, like, just has, like, you know, a really special place in my heart just because mm-hmm. w- that was the first time we were there. It was, like, 10 days, and I really experienced the sense of community mm-hmm. in Eugene and um, just, like, the amazing track energy. And so that's what I associate with it, and mm-hmm. I really think that um, enables me to um, rise to the occasion at that um, set uh, at that track so I just um, I hope that the same can apply Mm -hmm. um, this year and you know there will just be like a sense of nostalgia but something that like I hope will motivate me um, and that it's the last time to really celebrate um, you know all the good that's happened there. Is Is it a fitting end? to your Dartmouth career, that that's where it is? I mean, would you rather have it? I know you won your first championship in, Mm. um, you know, in Iowa. You've won more indoors and and New Mexico and stuff. But it seems like everyone has this attachment to Eugene and Tracktown and Hayward Field. And is this a perfect ending for you, at least your your collegiate career? Yeah, yeah, you could definitely say that. Um, Yeah, I mean, after the 5K last year and um, the year before, Um, I think it just like symbolizes like growth I've had in the Mm -hmm. sport and so yeah I'm really looking forward to it. Have you talked to Lexi? Oh yeah (laughs) of course she's actually in Boston now running a race but she's going to be back for um, we're going to that yeah I haven't seen her for like a year which is crazy so can't wait to you know chill with her too and there are other going to be other alums out there as well so it'll be a whole reunion. Is it weird that the first kind of two years you were here it was Alexi and Abby. It was like a duo. And then it was kind of just Abby all to yourself. And, you know, everyone was putting up on this. And now it's kind of every time I see you, it's, I mean, obviously it's not to the same extent, but it could be in that it's Abby and Dana. Is it mm-hmm. weird that you came mm-hmm. in, you peaked, and now you're kind of leaving with another person as yeah. a duo there? Yeah, it's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. Because I feel like, you know, Dana and I, like, mm-hmm. definitely have a partnership that's similar to um alexi and i and um it just like this past weekend was so incredible because Mm -hmm. it literally felt like just like it is in a workout the the race didn't feel like a workout but Mm -hmm. it feels like you know like we can rely on each other Mm -hmm. and um we're feeling the same way at the same time so um i'm looking forward to what she has to come in the next two years you know she's just got this like incredible grit and Mm -hmm. um she's going to do amazing things in the sport um so i'm i'm so glad she's had this year to really um believe in herself and uh, i think that's been the biggest difference lastly what are you going to miss most about being at Dartmouth. I know it's an everyday thing. You're going to move on. You're going to be a pro somewhere. You're going to live somewhere else. What are you going to miss most about being here? (laughs) Wow, that's another question. Um, It is another question. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Stating the obvious. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm just going to miss, like, the accessibility of those Mm. close relationships because, like, I've learned so much, you know, like, about over my, the course of my academic career, too, kind of, like, the way I prioritize my time that, like, in all of the, you know, kind of uh, difficulty and balancing, relationships are the most important thing, and um, I don't know, I think the access, like I said, to it is, like, you're, it's unpar- you know you're never going to get that anywhere else so um, I think it's going to be a challenge to like you know really choose those relationships that mm-hmm. do mean the most and, and continue them um, but yeah I'm just grateful for the people that have really kind of, kind of been role models for mm-hmm. me in the way that they um, care about um, the people that mean the most to them well Abby thank you we appreciate your time sitting down with us a um, 
it was uh, informative. We learned a lot. Uh, I want to uh, say thank you to. Uh, it's been uh, enjoyable working with you the last couple of years, and uh, it's been uh, a pleasure watching you not only grow up uh, on the track but also off. I think you're uh, you're got a, a good head on your shoulders and I think you'll be ready for the world so I appreciate uh, everything you've uh, helped for here at Dartmouth so thank you very much thank you so much Thanks all right thank you for joining us on this USTFCCCA and DartmouthSports.com student spotlight with Abby D'Agostino